So here we are in Lightroom 6 and I've got a few videos down at the, on the film strip here to select from, make my choice. Um, I'm looking for something that's got movement in the background but where the model is fairly still. And I've got a choice of three here for where I like poses in general. This one's got quite nice movement below the arm there. And each time I'm capturing a frame, after I've had a look, um, because I'm going to use that to colour my video. Um, now switch to develop and just have a look. This, this one is just too blurred, so um, it's a shame because I like that pose, but that's going to have to go. So we're left with the other two. And I think... Yeah, that's fairly clear. So the screen grabs are just JPEGs. And I think I'll go for the first one because there's more movement in the swathe of cloth behind. So I'm working on the JPEG now in develop. Just change the temperature. Uh, make a few adjustments just, uh, just for the sake of showing you what can be done. But obviously this is subjective. We would do the normal adjustments that you might make if your exposure is a bit off or whatever. The, these were shot with the, um, just using the modelling light so just a little bit warm for my tastes. Um, once you've made these adjust, adjustments you can then transfer that onto the movie. Um, not all of the adjustments that you make will go across but you'll see in a few seconds when I select the pair of them. Uh, a dialog box will appear and it will show you which which settings are going to go across. I've recorded this after um, doing this screen capture so I'm kind of making this up as I go along. Okay, So there's a before and after and on the right hand side by after I, I do prefer that. Um, so I'll go with that. Just uh, a little tweak here for some reason. There we go. Okay, so select both images, click on sync, and you'll see that even if I check all some boxes are greyed out. And that's pasted the settings on. Back to the library module to view the video. Um, that looks okay. And so at this stage, we can also trim the video um, by clicking on the cog and you don't have to do this in Lightroom you can do it later in Photoshop which is what I normally do um, I don't find this little control box quite big enough for me to really see what I'm doing but um, I've dragged the, the end there just because there's no point in including the part where Chloe moves her hands out because the whole object of the cinematograph is to have the model static in front of the background so um, I want her hands to be in the same position because they are at the foremost of the frame. So I'll just run through and check if there's enough movement. I think there is. Happy with that now. So now ready to export the file, just exporting it as a, an MP4, which is the standard, and that will then take with it the Lightroom adjustments that we've made. So here's our video ready for us to view. Um, just use the whatever your standard Windows program is to view it and you can see it's taken on the properties of the Lightroom file where the original movie file you can see it's quite a bit brighter, different colour, longer, whatever. Okay, so at this stage you'll get ready to go into Photoshop. So if you open your file in Photoshop Make sure that you have the animation view open in window. 
and this will give you the timeline at the bottom of the screen here. As you can see, you can play, you've got all the normal play, pause, um, etc. Stop controls that you would normally have. I'm just having a quick look here. There's a black bit at the front of the video there, so I'm just moving the timeline across to get rid of that. I'm going to drag some guides over and just use those just so that I can see how much movement the model actually makes. So one under a chin and one on the intersection of the neckline there. It's just to give, give a little guideline. If she swayed too much, then I would get rid of that part of the video rather than have uh, a very jumpy lumpy video. So a little bit of um, changing around. You don't need a huge amount of video. Most social media programs only want you to use between 10 and 15 seconds. Any more than that, people will get bored of seeing it anyway. And if you create a GIF and it's looping, um, okay, there's no point in having huge amount of video just taking up memory. So once you've roughly got the length of video that you want and you think that there's fairly smooth movement, you can then flatten the frames to layers and what this will do is take every frame and give you a, a normal layer which you'll be familiar with. And then click the button at the bottom here, have the timeline, and this will convert the layers to a frame uh, animation. And this is quite a helpful part because it gives you a lot of control. And now create frames from layers. And that's going to give you in the timeline for each of those layers a frame. And you can Click and run through and just have a look at that video, how it runs. Don't worry too much about the speed because you can select at the bottom here. Now I'm just copying the frames, so every single frame in there. And I'm going to paste them at the end. And while they're still selected, I will click on the little drop down box and reverse the frames. So now I've got the video going forwards once and then backwards and that cuts out the lump because you haven't actually got a point where the beginning meets the end when you're looping and this helps to smooth out some of the bumps, bumps and bumps that you get. You can also, if you select all your frames, so go right to the very end, um, you can click on the little icon in the bottom of one of the frames and change the frame rate. There's a, a little pause there. So I'm just going to slide through now and select a frame that I want to put on the top. And this one looks as if it will do. Just move this little dialog box out of the way. And what I'm going to do is move the slider down until I can see which frame is actually highlighted. There it is. I'm going to duplicate that frame and I'm going to rename it as top layer so that I know that that's the frame that I'm going to be working on. And then if I go to layer, arrange and bring to front, it will take it to the top of the stack. And now this is the one that I'm going to do a little bit of editing on. So I'm going to click out and click on the layer mask to give an empty mask on there. And with a paintbrush and colour white, just going to paint over the parts of the body that I want to stay still. So the face, uh, the hands and the front of the dress and the feet. Now her feet stayed fairly still and the dress at the bottom did move but for the purposes of this video I've, I've just left that dress out as is. So by masking out the, the rest of the video beneath the movement still continues 
and I can see that the crown is not quite solid enough, it's wavering a bit so I'll just zoom in more carefully on that and uh, paint that in on the mask so that that stays static. Um, sometimes that can be a problem if you have something like hair or, or a, um, a hat or something because it, if you've got movement behind it's very difficult to separate the two. But I think that's about right. So just zoom down to the bottom and just double check, just watching the video play and make sure that there's no sort of obvious faults there, um, no ghosting or shadowing. Um, sometimes there is and it's quite easy to go back and mask. Um, you can even mask individual frames if something really gives you a problem. So that's just cleared the guides away so that we can zoom in on the face and do a little bit of editing. I'm just going to use the healing um, tool just to take away a couple of distracting lines. You can do as much or as little as you wish. Obviously it's, um, it's your taste. Um, but just to show that you can do your normal editing work um, on these layers and just make that top image stand out just a little bit more. At this stage I'm not sure whether I need to but I am going to tidy up the background just a little bit. I intend to crop this image in but um, I may as well clone stamp over uh, just to make it tidy so that if I do crop I haven't got an annoying gap that I then have to go back and fix later. I'll just do that now. Um, probably have to, yeah, I've just dis disabled the layer mask so that I can actually see where I'm cloning. And uh, just going over the edges a bit the front. I'm doing this really roughly. Probably spend more time on this um, in the normal course of events, but it uh, doesn't exactly make exciting videos, so we'll keep it to a minimum anyway. Of course now when I re-enable the layer mask all that cloning disappears so I'll pick up a brush and with white just paint the mask back in so that uh, the cloning that I did reappears. I probably should have done this on a separate layer anyway but uh, <laughs> obviously missed that little trick out. And I've just noticed that uh, there's a couple of creases in that satin, which I can see. They're a little bit annoying. So this time I will rem remember create an empty layer and select my clone stamp again, making sure that current and below is selected here. And just, just soften up those edges, that's all. I've don't want to do anything too complex because I don't want anything that's going to show up too much as the video moves underneath. But uh, there are some pretty harsh lines there. Just have a quick check at the bottom here, see if there's anything else that needs doing. I think that's pretty much it now. Now I'm just going to make a selection as a guide for cropping. I won't use the um, criteria on the crop tool because I don't want to get too worried or too bogged down with how many DPI and what have you. I'll just create a, the aspect ratio that I want here. I'm just going to have a quick look what it looks like one to one because this video will probably end up on Instagram at one stage and obviously they favour their square format.
Um, it's a bit wide, so um, it's not my favourite shape. So we'll go for four by three, which is fairly standard. And then I can use the crop tool to just crop in, get rid of the fan on the left and the soft box on the right. And now takes on more of the shape of a moving picture, which is obviously what we were looking for in the first place. Cut the guidelines there for me. Now crop tool. Okay, so now looking at this, after it's been cropped, it looks a little bit bland. I think I'll um, put a curves layer on so I can put a little bit of a vignette. Let's give it a little bit of a atmosphere. So let's pull the curve layer down. And then I'm going to use a radial filter. On the mask itself, Oops, wrong way. I'll just have to go into the um, image and invert that mask so that I've got light on the front there and dark corners, which is the effect that I'm looking for. Yes. And now I can pick up a brush and uh, now with a black colour I can remove a little bit more of that curved layer by painting on the mask just to make it come alive again. And, uh, yeah, quite like that's, yeah, that's better than before. I'll just uh, adjust the curves slightly because it's a little bit harsh. And uh, hopefully that's improved it a little bit. Right, so we'll just clear these guides away again and uh, have another look at it and feel there's a little bit too much space on the right hand side. I think uh, we could do with a little bit of judicious cropping that uh, doesn't make for good telly I know. Maybe should uh, avoid this next time. Hopefully, if I do this again, my video aim will be a bit better. I must say I found it quite difficult. And uh, take my hat off to all those guys who do these tutorials all the while, because it's uh, not the easiest thing in the world to do. Much easier to actually do the work. So now I feel I've done probably as much work as I want to do on the video itself, on any of the editing. Um, the only thing that I feel now is that it could just be a bit slower and smoother. And I always leave this bit till last, until I've done all, all the messing about. So by selecting all the frames, so I can now click on the bottom corner there and I can select the custom and I'm going to do 0.4, which is my favourite frame rate. It slows it down, makes it smoother. Again, you could leave this until you actually edit in another program um, to optimise the publishing. But you have a little bit more control here, so I quite like to actually see the video go at the speed that I want it displayed before I upload it anywhere. So one final thing, I've created an empty layer and I've previously saved a brush with my watermark on it. So I'm just going to stamp that in the bottom corner because it's above the video, it will show all the way through. And just uh, click on the effects and add a drop shadow and uh, level to it just to make it stand out a little bit more.
So with that done, we're now ready to save the video um, by going to File and selecting Render Video. There's lots of different settings here and I have no idea whether these are the default ones because I've used them so many times and I've forgotten what it was to start with, but this is um, how I normally do it. Um, so you give it a name, create a folder for it, and uh, the settings here, I tend to leave this front page the same. Um, the document settings are the size of the frame. Uh, you can change speeds within here. I'm going to select the high quality. But as I said, if you change your frame rates before you actually get to saving, at least what you see is what you get then, hopefully. And with that done, that will churn away. It takes quite a while, so I'll stop the video there and give it a pause and go straight into viewing the finished item. So I'm by no means an expert. Uh, this is just my take on things, and I hope it's been helpful. But there are lots of videos out there, and uh, I'll put references below. Any questions, please ask me. Um, so there's the finished video there. Uh, which I will take forward and find a way of displaying online. If you want to see the tutorial on how I do that, um, watch this space or get in touch. Thanks for watching.